Hello everyone, welcome to our third module, Mechanical Properties of Concrete. Okay, let's start. Uh, to start with, reinforced concrete shows nonlinear behavior. What we understand from nonlinear behavior is that concrete's stress strain relationship is actually nonlinear. We need to understand the nonlinear behavior of concrete to predict the strength levels at different strain levels. <clears throat> In order to do that, many mathematical and material models have been developed, and we will see one of the most famous ones called Hognestadt model in the next slides. Another thing we need to know about concrete is that its behavior is also inelastic. Let's recall what elasticity is. So, if you have an elastic material in your hand, when you load the material to a certain level and then unload it, the material will return to its original state without showing any deformation or changing the behavior permanently. At this case, when you have an inelastic material, when you load it to a certain level and want to return back to the original strain state, well, that is not possible. And this leads to the third material property of concrete, actually. Concrete shows non-homogeneous behavior. As we can recall from our materials course, when you pour concrete on the site, it is, on, it is like impossible to obtain a homogeneous mix. Therefore, concrete's strength is non-homogeneous and there might be points where the strength is higher than the other points or vice versa. Time-dependent behavior of concrete is also not the points we need to talk about. Well, when you pour concrete, it gains strength as time passes. The, the strength gain is actually pretty fast during the first seven days and becomes slower afterwards. In the reinforced concrete world, we put a cap on that strength gain duration and we use the 28 day strength of concrete as the design value. So, at this point, you might be asking, what is the meaning of 28 day strength? Well, in order to test the properties of the concrete that you are going to use on your construction site, from every batch of concrete, you take a sample in the form of a cube or a cylinder. At the end of the 28 day, you crack those samples and measure the strength value at which they crush. The value you measure at, at this point is your 28 day strength. Let's move on. Okay, so as we talked, talked in our previous module, concrete's brittle behavior leads us to have a material that is strong in compression and weak in tension. Therefore, our primary target is to measure that compressive strength since the tensile behavior will be supported and governed by the inclusion of reinforcement. This compressive strength is nominated as 28 day compressive strength as we talked about. Uh, well, we also discussed that the specimens for those tests can either be cylinder or a cube. At this point, Everyone might be wondering what are the differences between using a cube or a cylinder specimen. Well, the failure load for a cube specimen is much higher as compared to the cylindrical specimen because of the differences in their cross-sectional areas. Therefore, testing of cube specimens require greater capacity testing machines. And when we compare the results of those tests, we can observe that the ratio of the cylinder strength to the cube strength varied from 0.7 to 1.1, with the mean value of concrete with the mean value of being 0.85. However, we must note that the strength of concrete is a random variable and therefore correlations obtained from a limited number of tests will be actually very misleading. 
I must also say that the multipliers proposed here, which is 0.85 in that case, they are obtained from the mean values of tests, tests and therefore the individual samples can deviate from this as much as plus or minus 30%. Uh, we have a lot to cover in this section, so I'm running out of time. Uh, we will cover the rest in the part two.